What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a little compact title called Mage and Monsters. This is a game where you are a wizard who is leading an army into battle in a gladiatorial arena. And I played the demo and actually I think it's a very tight demo. I think this is a game that has a solid sense of what it is. The developer posted it as a demo on Steam so that he could take feedback. And I found the game to be pretty fun actually. I played it a bit before recording this episode and had a good time with it. Uh, what it really reminds me of is that the game kind of reminds me of the battles from Heroes Hour, where they're like large in scale, but it's like Heroes Hour, I guess, if you took out like all of the city management bits. Uh, that's effectively what this game is going for. In Mage and Monsters, the core nugget of the idea is that you are a wizard and you are fighting other wizards inside a gladiatorial arena using an army that you are assembling. So like the first round, it'll be like a 4v4. And then after that, you get to draft more units or more spells or more upgrades or whatever else. And your army gets larger and larger and larger until it's like a 50 v 50 or like a 70 v 70. And this is very much a spectacle game. This is a game that you look at and you're like, dude, this is awesome. Because like everything is exploding. There's poison gas flying everywhere from you casting wizard spells. You've got dwarves and you've got minotaurs fighting and kicking the crap out of like elves and priests and like little grim reaper guys. Pretty, pretty interesting little title, so I'm hoping that he decides to go all in on this one and actually develop out the idea because I think it's pretty good so far. Uh, I've seen prototypes a lot worse, I'll tell you that. So let's play some Mage and Monsters, shall we? We'll jump on into a new game. Uh, so we get to pick our character. We can play as Procellus, we can play as Astrina, or we can play as Medela. Uh, this guy right here is basically a lightning mage. She's a fire mage. This is a healer. We'll start with Procellus because he's got that awesome Magneto helmet on and I like it. We also get to pick our starting fighters. Because I love dwarfs, I'm obviously going to go for dwarf warriors. There you go. So it's a 4v everybody. With the Q button, I can fire off a lightning bolt right here. And the core game is basically like you fight enemies. And when you defeat the enemy army, you have a very, very rapid draft phase in the middle. Like just happened right here. We get 30 bucks. And then we get to pick a boon. Uh, we can get like a blessing spell. We can get an impending doom spell, which basically converts one of our units into a suicide bomber. Or we can get six footmen to develop out our line. I will probably go with the six footmen for right now and the two dollars. That sounds pretty good. So now we've got 10 guys out of 20. And then with our money, we can choose a bunch of things from the shop over here. And these are all kind of permanent bonuses that follow you for the rest of the game. Uh, when your units die in the arena, they are resurrected after the fight is over. So you don't have to worry about running out of units or anything else like that. The only thing that matters is that you survive the next round. If everybody dies, that's it. The game is over and it will roll your unlocks and what you got for making it that far on into the game. And then you start over from the beginning but I found the game to actually be really 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 entertaining it's one of those games that you can just like turn your brain off and be like hey, this is awesome uh, so anyways we've got 20 boggards down here that we got to fight they're very very weak units one thing I would like is when you mouse over the top of this right here a little box should pop up with all of their stats uh, so you can figure out like am I up against like a weak enemy am I up against a strong enemy but there's only like a couple of them how fast are they how hard do they hit all that kind of stuff so that you can kind of mix and match with your own guys I would also recommend that they get a pop-up box for each of the mouse overs when you go over the units right here that does the same thing as of right now you can click on these guys to find out what they're stats are but I would very much prefer a text box you mouse over and a little unfolding text box comes out uh, we only have 50 bucks right now there's also another mechanic you have to be aware of with this title so the mechanic is the more money you have banked ie inside your wallet the more money you make from each fight because you're generating interest basically so that is the fundamental action I think this mechanic is very very good this is actually, I think, the mechanic that kind of ties the whole game together. Because do you scrimp and do you save and do you get a fat bankroll so that every fight you're getting huge amounts of money? Or do you spend your money and you give up on future money in order to make sure you win right now? And I find that idea of that exchange and that kind of resource management to be very, very compelling. For right now, we're just going to run it. We should be able to take these boggards no problem. There goes our little warriors right there. We'll chain lightning these guys up because it one-shots them, and that'll clear out the field a little bit. Hopefully, we'll get two casts. I don't know if we will. The fight may be over by then. We're not really losing anybody, and it looks like we have actually slain all the boggards pretty easily. If you're saying to yourself, this looks really, really easy, wait till you get further on into the game. It gets worse. Uh, we can get a fire tornado. 
Yeah, I got it. I got to get a fire tornado. That just it sounds too awesome to let up on. We've hit the tier 1 of rewards now. That means every single fight we're getting 10 gold in interest as long as we don't drop below 100 gold. So that should make our paychecks a little bit better. We've only got 10 guys right now. We're going up against 24. That's okay. I am unafraid. Let's see this. Let's see this fire tornado. Yeah, fire tornado worked out pretty well for me. That thinned them out pretty good. However, those little mushrooms right there, they do hit considerably harder than everything else we've gone up against. Luckily, with a little bit of finger wiggling, we've managed to pull through, and we're all right. We're going to want to pick up some more units right here. I'm going to take the archers. That sounds good. We'll take the archers. That puts us on 155 gold for the moment. I don't know if I want to upgrade anything. Anything. Uh, we're not unit capped yet, so I'm not going to. Let's go ahead and we will run it one more time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get them with some lightning right there. We're going to run the exact same strategy we did last time with the fire wave. Unfortunately, fire wave didn't claim as many victims that time around as I had hoped it would. Our dwarves have been laid low. I'm going to supplement them with a little bit of lightning right there. And the lightning clinched the fight for us. And we are out of here. Very nice. All right. So what do we have? We got some more dwarven warriors. We've got some more archers. Or we can take 75 bucks right now, which puts us into Tier 2 reward territory. I'm going to take the Dwarvish Warriors. I'm going to take the Dwarvish Warriors. That sounds good. So now we've got a full battle force. We'll fight one more battle, and then I'm going to increase my unit cap, I think. We can also tier up our units. So there are three tiers of units as it stands right now. You can see the locked ones right here. That's tier two. And then there's a tier three from what I've seen. There's also three tiers of spells from what I've seen so far in this build. And the spells do get pretty wild and pretty crazy and pretty supplementary. Let's go ahead and we will ready up for this fight. It looks like it's a bunch of boggarts. We'll go ahead and put out a little flame spell right there. Just kind of see who we can bowl over. Unfortunately, the unpredictable nature of the fire tornado cannot be tamed. Uh, we are going to throw a little bit of damage on these mushrooms down at the bottom. They do have wizards. I didn't see the wizards. I should have lightning to the wizards. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and burn the wizards. I don't care if I hit my own men. The dead cost, no the dead cost nothing. Arrows cost money. That's, that's my opinion right now. All right, 65 bucks right there, and that should take us up to tier 3, I think, right? Getting closer anyways. Uh, we can get Toxic Blast, which is a delayed mine. You put it on the ground and it ticks for a couple seconds and it blows up and does 20 damage. We can take some Cultists. These guys hit really hard, but they have like no HP. Or we can summon four archers at our chosen location. I'm going to go for the four archers, I think. That sounds pretty good. I don't know what the cooldown is going to look like on our range summon, but, you know, hopefully it's good enough. We're going to go ahead and get the next tier of units right there. And I think we're going to run it. We might lose right here. This is kind of like the uh, the risky business of the day. I'd like to eliminate as many of their wizards as I can for right now. We do have a lot of archers, though. It looks like the cooldown is fairly long on the archers, so we're going to want to really plan where we deploy those at. One thing I do think that the game is missing for the sake of... Uh, for the sake of feedback is a deployment phase. I think the game should allow you to deploy your units as you see fit. One of the things that I've noticed is because they come in from the left side of the screen and they come in in a long line and you don't get to decide who is where in that structure, what will happen here is sometimes you'll end up with like your healers running into combat first or your mages running into combat first. And I'd really prefer to avoid that. Another thing that I would recommend is if you don't particularly like anything on this list, there should be like a bypass and get like 40 bucks right here. Bypass with 40 gold that you get. Uh, the reason for that is there is an actual tile that gives you 75 gold, so it shouldn't be as valuable as that, but it should give you a little bit more than what the best reward is. Maybe you get 35 gold for passing. Uh, something like that would be really, really nice because there's literally nothing here that I want right now. I don't want any of it. I don't want to take the spells because we have limited slots, so I'm just going to take the warriors even if we don't end up using them. For right now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take... Let's take... Rank two spells and see what comes up in the next draft. We'll send them into combat. Uh, looks like we've got ourselves a pretty solid gathering right here of ghouls. I'm going to deploy my archers in the back, although I can't guarantee that they're going to be all right. We'll throw another chain lightning on in there. It looks like our melees did a pretty good job of blunting the assault. So I think we're going to be okay. The archers are chugging out here. They're putting out lots of flip flip bow damage. Looks good. And we are victorious. So with the money we have on hand, Reign of Death. That'd be pretty spicy. 
Oh, I can level up my fire tornado, too. Yeah, let's level up the fire tornado to tier two. Yeah, we got another pip on it. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead at this point, and I'm going to take... So I've got to be above 200 gold. I think what I'd like to take... We're going to take plus five to our unit cap. We can't fit them all in for right now. But that will let us fit in a couple of them more and then allow us to grow a little tiny bit as well. I'd like to get tier 2 units pretty soon. We'll probably pull the tier 2 units after this fight. That's going to bottom out our, our cash flow quite badly. Uh, but it sort of is what it is. Let's go ahead and we'll put a little flame tornado right there since it's only dealing half damage to my units now. We need another lightning bolt right there just to kind of flatten them a little bit. Archers are doing a great job. You guys keep on firing. Normally I'm not a fan of kind of like the long far away range combat. But you guys are doing a pretty good job right now at keeping my entire war effort alive. We do have a stuck enemy unit right there. A little bit of a bug, but that's okay. We've got ourselves a prototype build, so I'm not going to be too hard on it. I do think the core idea of the game is very good, though. I think it's a very, very good core idea. I think I'll probably take some more footman. Yeah, give me the footman. I want the footman. And then from our footman, let's get T2 units. So we are now officially into the second tier. I'm going to try to get my money back on this fight, but I don't know if we're going to win. Tough to say. Uh, we'll go ahead and send everybody in. Let me get those archers up. We're going to go ahead and lightning these guys. We're going to light off a firestorm right there in the middle where the gap is being closed. Okay, they do have a numerical advantage. That is no lie. We'll go ahead and fire off a little bit of lightning right there, which is going to finish off the last little group. Give me a little firewall right there. Very nice. Almost lost an archer, but apparently the archers in our army occupy a very privileged position where they rarely die and have to go through kind of like the, 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 the chain resurrection thing that's been happening. We can level up our chain lightning, or we can summon three bandits at a location. That's not a bad spell. It will allow us to reinforce with melee and bandits our tier two units that can take quite a beating. This, however raises us up to 14 bounces on our chain lightning and the damage goes from 20 to 30 so that hits considerably harder tough call i'm gonna do the summon melee because i think that fixes a problem in that our front line keeps going down uh, we're gonna have to run this again because i don't really have the money to do what i want to do we're gonna chain lightning those guys back there we're gonna try to firewall these dudes right here we're going to put in our archers. We're going to put in our bandits right there to run down the mages and just cause some chaos in the back street with the fat heat. And then it looks like we're actually pulling through pretty good. Yeah, I like that I can deploy my, my bandits anywhere that I want on the battlefield. That's a really nice come up. I am going to take... Ooh, summon range now gives you apprentices. Or we can upgrade this to summon knights. Yeah, let's do that. Let's upgrade it to summon knights. I've never seen the knights before. We haven't gotten to tier 2 units yet in any of our drafts and so like might as well we've got 334 gold let's upgrade everybody's hp by 20 percent and then we'll run it get the lightning on in there nice very nice bounce right there we're gonna want the firewall in kind of back there we'll put the knights in right there to cause some chaos just kind of keep them from bombarding the front line too much. Lightening those guys out. Looking good. Build seems to be fairly solid so far. Give me a few more archers just to work on the Bone King. Burn them up too. Oof. Bone King. So thick right now. So thick and juicy. Give me a few more knights over here. Few more archers actually they're all down we're good okay another 90 gold coming on and you can kind of see where the push and pull comes from with like how much money do i spend versus how much do i hold on to like i think the developer has actually come up with something fairly compelling here it's a simple game it doesn't require a ton of thought but there is almost kind of like a gambler thing going on with this title where you've got to pick and choose you know what do i want to do what do i want to do here uh, we've got attack, drinks a potion. After three attacks, drinks a potion that gives double damage. So he'll end up doing 18 damage. And he attacks quickly. We can get chain lightning level two or we can get apprentices. I'm going to get chain lightning level two. I think that spells are kind of carrying us right now. 180 boggards. 
that's a lot of boggards right there. That's a that's a solid quantity. That's like a felony quantity of of boggards right there. I'm gonna go ahead and deploy a flame. Basically, I think the key to this fight is gonna be cooldown management and figuring out where I want to engage at. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Okay, give me some flames down there. Line is holding. Give me some lightning right there. Uh, we are going to have to thin them out up top, so that's what we're going to do. It looks like we are winning, and I think it was a really good decision for the dead bodies to be left on the battlefield. Uh, I think that was a fantastic choice. It lets you in the after action kind of like notice uh, basically the scale of the fight that you just undertook. I'm going to go with three apprentice upgrade for our summon spell for range. We got 451 bucks right now. We're really starting to put some serious money down range. I'm going to go for an upgrade spin right here, and I'm going to pick up... Ooh, we've got upgraded dwarves, and we've got upgraded bandits. I'm going to take the upgraded miners. That sounds good. And then we need to mess with our army list. Uh, so I think we take down... What do you guys have going on? 40 health? Okay. Since they're a straight upgrade, we'll go ahead and put these guys in just to help out a little bit. And then, oof, we got pretty stiff competition on this next go. Maybe. Let's call it plus 20% damage on all melee units. I think that'll help. Get the wizards in. Damage is going out. We seem to be doing okay. Give them a little bit of supplementary help down on that flank right there. Give me some fire up here. Very nice. Uh, give me some more knights. Give me some more mages. Hey, I think if we had played our cooldowns a little bit differently, that would have been GG's. But we got it. 100 gold in the tank. Uh, let's keep her going. So we can get 75 gold right here, or we can take four more miners to replace some of the guys that we have. I'm going to take the 75 because I want to increase my pop cap. And so that gets me there. And 28 witches and five ogres. We can take that no problem. We don't need to spend. We're okay. Uh, let's chain lightning all these guys. Get them with a little bit of fire back there. Give them a little bit of chaos on that side. I deployed the wizards in the wrong spot. That was my bad. See how many we can get with the lightning right there. Lightning went okay. They've only got one wizard left. Melee's tagging down the last ogre up in the top quadrant. And it looks like we've got ourselves a W on our hands. Very nice. Very, very nice. I would like the ability to push pause. I don't know if that goes against the spirit of the game. But being able to zoom in, zoom out, push pause, all that kind of stuff, I would definitely, just for me personally, find that to be very agreeable. We're going to take four more bandits right here. And the four bandits have been automatically folded on into our battle group. We have two more of you guys we can bring in. And we've got to fight three skeleton kings. It's going to be a tough one. This is not going to be an easy fight. Go ahead and put down the knights real quick. We'll burn them up a little bit. I don't know how much that's going to help. I may have just wiped out my own front line. I may I may have gotten a little bit greedy with the flame wall, but it looks like they're going down. I think we're all right. Give me some more wizards. Give me some more knights. Very good. This is going so much better than my last build. My last build was going terribly. Like, I was getting stomped out by this point. Now let's get a few more bandits. And we're going to start getting rid of these little shield guys and replacing them with bandits. We have $581. For all intents and purposes, that means we have 80 bucks that we can spend right now. There's nothing I can afford for 80, or 80 bucks except for another reward. So let's let her float for a little bit. I think we can take this next fight without it. I want the wizards to die. If we can focus entirely on wizards, I think that would be ideal. We'll burn them up since they're holding back, although I don't think we got the full mileage out of that flame wall right there. Uh, top flank is about to go down. We'll hit it with some lightning. We need some more knights over here to occupy, some more wizards just to add a little bit more DPS to the situation. And I think we are home free. There we go. Perfect. 150 bucks should buy something nice. 
And with our upgrade, ooh, we've got healers in here too. My experience with the healers, though, is that they always die and they don't heal fast enough. I ran the healers pretty aggressively when I was first trying them out, and I was kind of like, meh, about it. I'm going to take the centaurs because centaurs are really good for horde fights. Uh, centaurs have a cleaving attack, and they're really good against stuff like 500 stack boggards or, you know, like 200 stack mages. Things like that they're really strong against, and I find them to be really helpful. Uh, we can go for just about anything we want right now. I think I'll probably take the ranged unit damage. And I'll probably take, we've got like, what, 150? Let's run this and see if it happens. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we're going to give it a try. Really good flame wall right there. Getting some good mileage. We just really need the line to hold here. And soften them up enough that spell casts start dropping them. Give me some more knights. Give me some more wizards. Actually, our battle force came through that one in solid shape right there. We didn't have to worry about it too much. This is the wave that wiped me out on the last run, so I was kind of worried about it. I was a little bit concerned. I don't know how many waves there are inside this kind of alpha demo, but I'm really, really enjoying the game. I think it's pretty rad. We'll get a few more centaurs just in case we go up against a horde fight and we need the cleave damage. Uh, I can get more units without killing my 500 bonus. Let's go ahead and throw the centaurs in there. Might as well. Throw a couple more of the little shieldy boys in there too. Army's looking pretty good. Ready. Let's run her. Get some lightning off. Trolls going down pretty good right now. Uh, we're getting bowled over like a little tiny bit. But I don't think it's going to be that bad with summons. Summons seem to be very, very strong from where I'm sitting right now. Like, summons buy you a lot of time. Like, basically, they allow you to, like, infinitely reinforce positions. As long as the cooldown comes up quick enough and you'll be all right. Uh, let's go ahead and we will take a few more bandits. And with what we've got going right now, we've got 200 gold to throw around. Let's get rank 3 spells. I'd like to level these up a little bit further since we're leaning on them pretty heavily. Take another upgrade spin. We can summon three paladins now. Very nice. And there's our paladins. Uh, this game is using a sprite pack, a fairly common sprite pack. I don't know if you recognize some of the characters uh, from, like, Nomad Survival and, like, two or three other games that are on Steam. But it is using sprites from an asset pack. I do think it would distinguish itself a little bit further. Uh, hopefully the game does good sales so that they could actually, like, customize out some of the, the assets. Uh, but, you know, it's not one of those things that hugely annoys me. Paladins, you want to get in there and take care of this? Like, I've never really been too bothered by, like, pixel art sprite packs or things like that as long as the game is good and makes enough adaptations to the overall idea to make it enjoyable. Ooh, I can get five apprentices now? Yeah, dude. Even more apprentices. Uh, nine minotaurs and twelve mages. Oh, boy. It's getting a little scary in here. I'm going to give everybody a health boost, even though I lose my level 5 gold bonus. We got most of the mages with the chain lightning cast. Our line is not getting bowled over, but it is kind of faltering. Give me a few more mages. The mages hit really hard. I think we would actually benefit pretty pretty aggressively by raising their attack power by another 50% or so. Although, honestly, we came out on top pretty solid. I'm, I'm fairly happy with the victory right there. How long is this demo? Is it going to end? This is the farthest I've been now. Let me get 75 bucks because we're kind of in the market now to where we're just unlocking upgrades. Hey, all normal levels have been overcome. Very nice. You have defeated all the normal levels in the limited version of Mage and Monsters and are now entering the end game. Spend all your gold now. You will not be coming back. In the end game, rounds of monsters will spawn until your army will perish. Oh, I kind of dig that, though. That's pretty cool. All right, let's spend all of our money and see how long we can last. Uh, let's get range damage up. We'll get melee damage up. We will get spell casting damage up. And that's pretty much all of our cash. Roll them, boys. Roll them bones.
Okay, I, I didn't mean to wipe out my own units right there, but it's 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 what happened, all right? We're going to address it. We're going to talk about it. I'm not proud of it, but it's a thing that occurred. And let me get some more of you guys out here. Oh, I thought there was going to be no break in between the rounds. Gotcha. There is a break in between the rounds, though, which is actually fairly generous. Oh, don't push too far, boys. Keep on going. Keep on going. You got to fight for your right to keep living. Get a few more down. Dude, I kind of want to do like an all summon build. But since we've hit the end of the video here, yeah, that's pretty much my thought is A, the 50 unit cap. You got to crank that up. This is one of the this this is one of those games that's going to benefit tremendously from being divorced from any semblance of anything that even remotely looks like uh like sanity or decency or like standards. Uh you're going you're you're a, if you really want to capture people and get them into this game, you need to get it up to like 300 v 300, where it's just absolute mayhem and chaos. Other than that, the only thing that I thought about is that when you mouse over things in your army menu, uh, you want some pop-up boxes right there with all of their stats. Likewise, I'd like to see that for the enemies down at the bottom. Uh, the UI is a little tiny bit utilitarian. It gets the idea across and it functions perfectly fine. But I do think some people are going to be like a little bit off put by kind of almost what look like default Unity menus. And so anyways, that was my initial thought is that the menus kind of look cheap compared to the rest of the game. And so maybe getting some menus on in there that have a little bit more like filigree or like a little bit more, you know, something, something to them. Make them look a little bit more ornamental and a little bit more pretty might be an okay idea. Uh, but other than that, I think this is a great idea for a game. Like a really, really fantastic idea for a game. Especially if you can kind of like metagame out and sort of... If you can metagame meet out the content. And what I mean by that is like every single run you're unlocking new units. Or you're unlocking permanent buffs for pre-existing units. Or you're unlocking like extra spells that you didn't have at the beginning of the game. Extra enemy monsters and stuff like that. Boss fights, things of that nature. Uh, different arenas. I mean, all of that's really, really great. And honestly, if this game comes in a package that costs as much as like, you know, Vampire Survivors or something, like three to five bucks, this is exactly the kind of game that I put stupid amounts of hours into, even though they're very, very simple and they are very, very kind of refined in their premise. I love army versus army things. It just, it entertains me, especially when they've got a really, really good loop with the whole like money management system that they have in the game. I like that a lot. And so anyways, I'm, I'm digging the game. I, I think this is a really, really, really good first pitch. I honestly, sincerely do. Uh, I mentioned the stuff that jumped out at me, uh, custom sprites, a little bit more of like a pretty sort of inline uh, UI, uh, stat boxes for enemies and also for your characters inside the in-between menu. Um... But other than that, zoom in, zoom out, pause. I, I think you're I think you're in pretty good shape. And of course the deployment phase as well. That's just kind of my thoughts. That's that's my thoughts. Uh, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. This is Mage and Monsters. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with this one. It's always the simplest games that get me. Just like with man, just like Exodemic. It's like it's the simple games that always get me. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. It's time for me to go. Bye bye, everybody.